Hello everybody, it's Matt with Discovery Outdoors and this week we're actually doing some fishing with Nelson from Fish on Guide Service again. We're out at Grand Lake, Oklahoma uh, catfishing and we uh, just did an incredible job out there, had a great time uh, finding those spring catfish, which can be very shallow. Uh, speaking of which, this week if there's something you take from the video, I hope it is uh, that you need to be able to get up in the shallow and stay there. Uh, this is one of the products you could do that with. This is a shallow water anchor. Uh, this is a 12 foot one. I wanted a longer one so I can get in water seven, eight feet deep. And uh, basically, uh, this thing just goes uh, down into the mud, hold your boat wherever you need to be. So definitely a product worth looking into if you can't afford to get into the talons uh, and the other shallow water anchors. So without further ado guys, enjoy the video. Nelson with Fish on Guide Service, Grand Lake, Oklahoma. Catfishing for Blue Cat. I know we don't go across this mud flat, but we're going to shoot straight across over there. We're going to give it our last shot, and I'm just doing that. I don't think there's any on the gravel bars yet, but I'm just curious. Yep. Well, yeah, maybe. Five minutes to find out, literally. Yeah, doesn't take anything. Hang on. I'd rather be driving all around this. Uh, I'm going to romp this and get on the plane real quick. Am I hanging? Yep. It is a good place to start. Yeah, that's a great place to start. Pretty close to bank. When I say a foot off this bank, I can work this whole line and one day we had 223 catfish we'd caught in one day. Oh no, damn. Point, no. So that point, eight hours. Huh. And they were slamming. And they just get right up on shore there, huh? I'm talking if you're a foot off the boat bank, you weren't catching nothing. Is that a fish? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Can't he get him in the roll. Or... Yeah, he might be in something. He no, feels he's on top. Like... He's just okay. He's, he's just a bigger fish. Oh, he came loose. He was in something a little bit, maybe a limb. He was on there because no, he's there. No, I mean he. Uh, the line I think was in something there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's still there. Whoa! What? He just showed up. That's a fish. Yeah. I did not think that was gonna. I was expecting a two pounder to come up. He wasn't fighting. <laughs> He didn't fight at all. He didn't do nothing. He just laid over uh, The tree took it out for him. He didn't do anything all the way in. <laughs> he ended up being an eight, nine pound fish. I think you're getting a big guy, but he has a good fish. What? I'm going to tear up some thumbs here today, but I'm okay with that. Ah, there he goes too. Every time. That's all right. That's a nice fish. That's a very good looking fish. Probably around, you know, seven, seven and a half, eight pounds, somewhere in there. So, Is there maybe I mean, a minute and a half? It couldn't have been a minute in there. Yep. It couldn't have been. You didn't have it in the rod holder yet. <laughs> yep. You know, so... Good looking fish, yeah, absolutely. So awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's good. Good fish. I love these things. I'm gonna let them go out and get a little bit bigger so you guys can have a shot. Here we go. Good stuff. You I guess, if you got it all the way to the boat before you realized it was a decent fish. He, well, you know, I started, he, he, he put some pressure. He put deep. pressure and then I felt like real tension and I thought, oh, I think he's in that log and then it, it felt like it came loose. But he started sw swimming right at the boat. I just noticed it coming out and I thought, hey, I think there's a fish on this. <laughs> so this trend continued all day long. Once we figured out basically how the fish were patterning, we were, I mean, we'd be pulling fish in in the process of trying to get rods in the water. Uh, they were just moving really, really fast. We had a lot of luck from there on in the very shallow water. And when I say shallow, keep in mind these fish were in water literally between one foot and three feet deep. We were not catching fish when we were getting over three or four feet. No, I just, you were watching him, I tricked him into biting that thing, and then I <laughs> oh, said, okay. look, hey, that's what it was. car salesman again? Uh, <laughs> okay, first, first liar ain't got a chance. You know, it, 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 channel look, cat. Look at that. Look, yeah. uh, who, who called You're the talking channel? about an orangey old channel cat. Who called the channel? Yep. Look at that. 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 Look at yeah, they seem to just like you said. They're they're right up next to the yep, logs yep. in the shallows. You have to work mud flats, whether it be deep or shallow, because that is the home of the blue cats. Not necessarily the channel of the flatheads, but the blue cats. 
you very seldom see a blue cat where he doesn't have mud on him, you know, especially in uh, winter and spring. Now, summer, they'll move out to a lot of gravel flats and whatnot else. Right there. Mm -hmm. He's on there. He was. Yep, he yeah, is. He's on the he's real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's on. Like you were saying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a there is the one on there somewhere. He didn't come up yet. So awkward to reel with my left hand. Oh, you're a big oh, yeah. guy. I, I'm a right hander. Yeah. You're a thumb guy. I'm a weird one. Another fish handed. right one. Another good one. I throw him back, but then he slaps me. <laughs> what he says, almost a card, not just a sin. No, I, say I think he said a cardinal sin. No, it's criminal. 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 Should be a felony. Yeah. <laughs> good thing I'm not your senator here. I'm making a felony. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to buy extra batteries just to fish like you fish. Spot, spot. Because <laughs> you, you turn and burn so fast, you don't really turn your cameras off and, and reset no, and move right it. There. Oh, there you go. See, it? there you go. Yeah, That's how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, he ain't on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's on Eddie. That's on Eddie. That's on Eddie. Like I brought a box of real hooks. <laughs> Some real hooks, just in case. <laughs> Some of those straight ones that are meant to go on yeah. poles. Yeah. Yeah, but they'll still be out here in this two, three foot of water. Actually, I'll be on the gravel bars. When it gets really warm, they'll get on the gravel bars. Because when we start getting warmer temps, the gravel bars will warm up faster. You know, in the cold temps, the mud's going to hold heat longer. And your warm temps, right there, this fish up. Maybe. Last time I got excited, you know. Yeah, Don't listen to Eddie. <laughs> I ain't listening to uh, Eddie. I'm going to let him di drive that hook so far in his mouth. Don't listen to Eddie. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> like a count to ten or something. That's not a bad little fish here. Yeah. He's, he looks a little fatter. I was going to say, he looks a little more golden, I think. Might be a decent channel that we got. But find out here. It is. Pretty darn nice little channel right there. <laughs> that that does count for a throwback. I don't like them eat them. Some like I mean some love them, but I like the blues better. Whatever you want. You can throw it back. That's fine. Good looking fish though. Not bad. Gorgeous fish. They got little spots on there. Beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. So the key is I, I'm not supposed to touch it first. That's what it is. I think. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Liver poles. Yeah. Hundred times better every time. There you go. And this one's a decent fish right here, guys. There we go. Look at that. Not too bad at all. Next time you feel when it's real good, I get the camera out. I don't see as much. He's actually recording all of it. I bet you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm take a lot of footage on that's a nice chunky little guy there. Good eater. Just about perfect. Oh yeah, a little fat one. Just perfect. If that'll make you hungry, you don't like food. I'm gonna bet you that tree takes off first. You think it'd be that one? Outside one? Yep. Like that. Something else. I don't know why these blues like that open water so much. They don't always when the water drops, that's where it's targeting a brush. Yeah. But in the summertime, you know, in, in, in the big, part, big, big, school big part of the yeah. lake, uh, they be yeah. Oh, there it is. He's right. He was correct. Oh, the second one. Look at that. We're doubling. And it's the same one that you said, well, okay, I lose that bet. That's cool. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can admit defeat. I'm good with that. Oh, it might be the same one. Is it on the same pole? No, oh, okay. No, no, okay. No. I'm way off yonder. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm going to swing this back. Straight behind me here. And there it is. And you were right, man. It, right up against the brush pile, They're just like you said. Today. I mean, shallow. And they are. Nice set of doubles, though, no matter how you look at it. 
Yeah, yeah that excellent. Let me take care of that. I got flyers. Oh, he's getting a quick picture of it. There you go, good fish. So this, I, that's what I kind of call this in. When you're up close and personal in the brush, I call this hand to hand with these. I mean, if you're in a little battle zone over here in that brush pile, they know it. Yeah, and you're going to lose some hooks too. Yeah, gotcha. it's going to happen. Have one on that one. Oh, there look you. at that. Yeah, sure enough. Oh. Wait, hey, so on there, he's just not, he's not. Hey guys, make sure you stick around for garage talk here in just a minute. We have some really important things to cover. He's just running at us a little bit. Another heat side blue. Yeah, under this one. There you go. Old and shallow today. Nope. They are, aren't they? I mean, just really, really shallow. <laughs> Someone grab that fish. We almost, almost doubled up on that one. <laughs> good, good for it. Let's see what we got. I see a head. Yeah, it's the same. It's fuller. It's fuller. Another sandwich fish. Oh, what is that? That pulled down piece of bile sack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed to really like it, though. Yeah. Didn't change the bottom at all, did it? He, he was into it. <laughs> it is pretty gross looking stuff there. It is rough looking, isn't it? That's pretty, that's pretty bad. It's <laughs> bad, too. I bet it does. It's just blood and fish smell. This is Nelson Watson from Fish on Guide Service from Grand Lake, Oklahoma. We provide uh, charter trips and guide trips for Spoonbill through the old uh, middle of November to the, about the last part of April. We catfish all winter, all summer, all spring. Offer some great shallow water catfishing all up and down the river as well as down on the lake. We offer some terrific white bass trips all season long. A lot of good crappie fishing trips. In the summertime, we do a lot of bow fishing night nights. If you're interested in it, please give me a call. Nelson Watson, 417-214-8645. Fish on Guide Service. All right, garage talk today, guys. I want to cover a few things that made it successful on the lake. First of all, the first thing I want to tell you is the video I cut, I did my best to make it informative and fun, uh, but I had to actually cut it into multiple videos. So there's actually another one coming up from that one trip because we ended up catching like almost 40 fish. I think we were somewhere around 35 to 37. We were trying to figure it out, but caught a lot of fish. So we limited two limits. I mean, both of us took home all the fish we could legally keep. So we did quite well. We wanted fish in the freezer here, and we got all we needed, so it went well. So I wanted to cover a few of the basics here on the on Garage Talk today. First of all, how did we rig it? Well, he did. He actually rigs up a lot like I do whenever the fish bite is a little, a little soft. And when it's cooler water, that was 51 degree water. So the fish are just starting to come in, try to warm up. And what you'll find is when the water gets that cool around that 50 degree mark, a lot of fish actually will try to find places where they can find warm pockets. And shallow water is actually one of them because the sun will come through and heat the bottom. So these fish were literally between a foot and three foot deep. So anyways, the way you rig up when you go with a shallow bite is you're just going to put your weight directly on your line like this. And this is a much smaller rig I was using for channel catfish the other day. But uh, same idea, a two or three ounce sinker or whatever you're using. Uh, you put it on your line and then you go to a swivel and now in this case I led the swivel straight to my hook but he actually did a leader from uh, from a barrel swivel um, over to his 7 knot hook. So again you got a 7 knot hook, you've got a leader, you've got your barrel swivel and then you have your weight on your actual line. Now uh, the line he actually uses this right here. It's actually one of my favorite lines too. I use this all the time. It's a Trilene Big Game uh, in Solar Green, uh, 20 pound. Uh, this is a great line. You can catch a lot of fish on 20 pound line. I think sometimes it's one of those areas people get a little uh, excited about line, and they you know they're talking about 60 and 80 pound line, and they're catching four pound fish. You can catch a lot of fish with a properly set drag and 20 pound line. So this really is enough to do just about anything you should want to do in most lakes here, uh, locally at least. Next I'm going to go back to what we talked about earlier with the shallow water anchor. 
or uh, one of the poles or with a talon. This is a real critical aspect of fishing this time of year when the fish are shallow. You got to be able to, to get in spots that it's just really weird spots and it's hard to get to and your boat has to sit exactly a certain way and that's when those things really shine. So I've got shallow water anchor for anchors for mine. I've got two of them. Uh, he obviously has two talons on the back of his and he's got uh, another anchor on the front. It's the, the micro pole. So he has the ability to get in a lot of uh, really strange positions. And that's something you're going to need to do when these fish get like they were and they get harder to get to. They get to the shallower areas and weird spots. You got to be able to move around, move the boat, hit logs and brush piles and catch some fish and be ready to move. Because the thing that's interesting about this time of year is they're all stacked in these huge flats all over the brush okay so when you get in there and this happened our whole trip i cut out a lot of it because it's just not something you want to watch but when you get in there you hit let's say two three brush piles this little area you catch like three or four fish and it shuts completely down so if you're sitting there for five to ten minutes and there's nothing going on move i mean you could sit there and you probably catch some more fish here and there but you've caught the ones that are actively feeding right there right now Okay, so as soon as that happens, you need to move, catch you another stretch of logs and piles and, and put the bait out again and get the fish that are actively feeding and ready to go and then move again. We did that. We moved probably eight times, I think, something like that. And we put, uh, like I said, almost 40 fish in the boat in about three and a half hours. So we had a successful day. We had a lot of fun. The bait of choice, some people are going to ask, we did use uh, spoonbill liver. And the reason is quite simple. This time of year, spoonbill are actually coming in for the spawn. Okay, so when they spawn, they lay their eggs. And when they lay their eggs, their eggs get washed down sometimes, or they just lay their eggs. Let's say they're ready to lay their eggs, but they're not up, up the river because it's a little colder than they want. They're going to lay their eggs wherever they are. So those eggs are actually an incredible source of food for a lot of fish. Catfish love them, eat them right up. The thing is, that liver, that spoonbill liver, has the same amino acids, the same blood, the same scent. It's basically the same thing. And catfish are going to smell it and going to go straight for it. They've been eating those eggs here and there for, you know, for a month. So they're looking for that. They're actively seeking it. Now, in Oklahoma, it's perfectly legal to use spoonbill liver. But check your local laws because here in Missouri, I cannot use spoonbill liver. liver. It's very much illegal. So just uh, want to end it on that, guys. Check your local laws before you use a, 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 some strange bait like that. Guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's program. It was a good one. We caught a lot of great fish, and it will be continued on next week's catfishing program. We're going to go through and show another 10, 15 good fish and some more tips, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.